Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM, stuff that I wanted to talk about. Again, all the songs are in a Spotify playlist down below, in the link for that, as well as a reminder that this is just my opinion on stuff, uh, so don't take it as gospel truth, but uh, let's hop into it with the bad category, songs that I think are not great. Uh, we're starting off with uh, Tynan's Kitchen Tearout. Um, this is just generic tearout to me, nothing more, nothing less. It's also really short, so I mean, not for me. Then we got Netsky and Dylan Francis with Nobody Likes Nobody Like the Records That I Play. And uh, I've never really been a fan of these self-deprecating woe is me sort of tracks. And this is that, obviously, with the name of the title there. And uh, this song has like a move-in, four-in-the-four style beat, but is meant to go and like keep you going. But it just offers little else to it, so I wasn't a fan of that. Then we got Bows with Lick It and... I mean, what even is this one? It's a relatively soft, hard style mix that samples a, a Kylie Minogue vocal throughout. It's just a weird track all around that I did not uh, did not resonate with me personally. Then we got Kirby with East Bounce. Um, yeah, sure, the song has some fun like Eastern trap bounce vibes to it, but the song is just awfully boring other than that and so I just don't find any real reason I would listen to this more than uh, once or twice here. So yeah, not a fan. But then we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were uh, were were pretty meh. We've got um, uh, oh we got Muzz with Rain Dance. Uh, I don't think the song is necessarily like bad by any means, but just over the last year, I felt like we've just been getting the same song over and over from Muzz. Like like I feel like I've heard this one before. Like it's just rinse and repeat, drum and bass. Like it's mixed well. It's just the sound and style that I loved from years ago that just feels like it's getting recycled. So I don't necessarily don't like the track, but it's just something a little different would be great, personally. Then we got Jason Ross featuring Brandon Burnett with No Tomorrow. Uh, pretty average sounding hard dance with a linear structure and basic lyricism. Uh, pretty underwhelming for me, especially because I love uh, Brandon Burnett's vocals. But this track just really didn't let him shine as much either. So yeah, I'm not, not a fan. We've got Chami and Mala with A Prayer, The Drinks On Me remix. A uh, fairly simple and down-to-earth garage uh, mix of a originally Tech House track. Um, this new take didn't feel like it was a stretch stylistically over the original, but I thought it brought some chill vibes with the OG. Uh, yeah, just didn't really have uh, didn't really have that much. It was kind of, uh, yeah. Overall, I think this track was more or less stunted by the kind of boringness of the original, so... What's that? We got Martin Garrix and Mesto featuring Wilhelm with Break Away. Uh, getting a lot of new Martin Garrix lately, and I'm assuming that means there's some upcoming EP or LP in the works. It would be my assumption. Uh, but this track in particular is another kind of classic electro big room sound from Martin Garrix here uh, with his classic sounding synths as well. It's just, I don't know what it is exactly, but you hear it and you're like, oh, that is Martin Garrix, uh, like to a T. So uh, it's a little basic of a track for my liking to be anything higher than me personally. Then we got Kaiwachi and Low Spear with Happier By Now. This track had all the elements to be a hard-hitting dubstep song, but ends up being a substantially more melodic and lighter cut than I expected it to be. Uh, but something just didn't quite sit well with me in the end here. The whole track felt off, almost like it was trying to be... Uh, trying to be something that it wasn't and I know that's because I felt like it needed to be harder and it was like a softer more melodic track but I don't know didn't didn't quite sit well with me and then we got Selena Gomez with Love On uh, this is more of a new disco dance pop record but it is I would still consider it EDM under the umbrella EDM of or at least dance electronic and uh, it's a really fun track but definitely a little cheesy and bland uh, for my liking more often than not and um, yeah it's 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 fun but it's still pretty cheesy pop, but uh, also, uh, if you guys didn't know, Selena Gomez actually makes a lot of, uh, like, dance pop. A lot of her discography is, like, pretty, like, close to house at some points, and so I actually really have liked what of, what, some of what Selena Gomez has put out in the past, so... Then we got Crystal Skies and Lux Tides with Other Side. Uh, the Stardust LP is out now from Crystal Skies, and uh, this is a punchy melodic dubstep song that um, sounds a bit stronger than your more kind of bland commercial melodic dubstep cut, uh, but struggles a lot with its mixing, I think. Um, it's pretty much a copy-paste drop as well that I just don't appreciate as much. And so, yeah, this was a weird one for me. There's elements that I enjoy, but um, elements that I didn't. So that's why it's here, just in May.
As we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were uh, were pretty solid, pretty good. We've got Sebastian and Grosso and Steve and Gello with Skip. Uh, a dark driving house cut with hints of Swedish House Mafia all over it. Um, it's a neat cut that would work really well in the context of a bigger project, I think. Um, similar to the way that Mafia did off of the Paradise Again al- uh, album from Swedish House Mafia. It's like a little bit more of a darker, like brooding track, but uh, works well in the context of the whole run of the record rather than just being a single. So. We got Eula Away, um, a way, not away, uh, a space way. Uh, yeah, Eula definitely has some really clean progressive house sound design out there, uh, but it just feels a lot same samey for me. Everything that they put out in the last little bit is kind of the same, but I guess it's up to you if you think it's more of a good thing or not. So if it's too much of a good thing, sure. Uh, then we got Draper with Looking Above. Uh, I feel like it's been a while since uh, Draper has released. Uh, for me personally, I look, look back and there was some odd releases here and there, but um, this feels like a, 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 I don't know, the start of something new maybe for Draper coming up, but um, it's great. Uh, it's a nice, lighthearted, upbeat, liquid drum and bass track with a very light atmosphere and one that's like quite relaxing to listen to and reminds me a lot of like 2014 Draper, if anything. Um, so something off of the his Ambito or Perspective EPs from forever ago. I think those are the names of both those, so. Uh, then we got Shock One with Alone. Uh, the Organism Algorithm LP is out now, and this track in particular is probably one of the better ones. It is a fairly uh, generic paint by numbers sort of DNB track, a little bit more of a dance floor beat to this one, but uh, it's pretty good, just a little bit more generic in the side of things, uh, but a lot more interesting than the Muzz one earlier, I would say personally. So. We got Ryan Case uh, featuring Jake Newmar with Don't Wanna Know. A very bright and shimmering house production here from uh, a new Monster Cat artist, I guess, joining the family here. But it's like one part disco, one part house, and all around just quite fun. And so uh, I'm, I'm interested to hear more of Ryan Case. Uh, this was pretty solid. We got Paper Skies and Nitrix with Free Falling, uh, a wet but also like rigid pseudo color based track with a ton of energy. Uh, this feels right up the alley of a Paper Skies and Nitrix. This is like almost almost perfectly what I would have imagined of these two collabing. And so, yeah, it's a great cut, one that I really enjoyed. Then we got Raise Hell and Cloud Zero with Binary Blood. Uh, Drift Funk Bass House uh, is definitely a melding of genres that... uh actually uh, kind of slaps. Um, I actually think Fonk is best paired or is, is at its best when it's paired with something else. We've heard that a lot recently with the kind of garage track with the hypertrance one and now it's kind of more bass house heavy one. And uh, yeah, I think it's a neat track and I think uh, it, it works well. I I stand corrected a while ago. I said Fonk was dead, but uh, I think Fonk is getting some, some more life into it now, especially with it being melded together with so many other genres right now. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. We got Smokeland and Sippy featuring Prob Cause with Smoke and Sip, which Smokeland and Sippy, Smoke and Sip, it makes sense. Uh, but this is a crunchy bass house cut with uh, Prob Cause bringing a real hip hop vibe and atmosphere to the whole track. Um, it's kind of like a carefree, no nonsense, casual track that worked really well. It reminds me a lot of like a big gigantic uh, track, so without the saxophone as much. So <laughs> it's a fun one. We got Solji with Fall. Uh, Solji definitely has a flair for the unique, I must say. It's a deep house track with these really sharp and metallic synth hits. Um, they were also backed by a really, really dense bass line. And it also has a whole like minimalism ness to it, minimalisticness to it. I hope that makes sense. Um, that's not proper grammar, but uh, yeah, it, it's quite minimal. It works well. I really enjoy it, and I would love to hear some more Solji. We got Chime and Caro with uh, Liquid Data, another very wet and groovy color base uh, track here, landing on Chompo 2, the upcoming Chompo release. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the mix up in sounds from this specific Chompo 2 compilation. I think a lot of them have sounded very uh, Tokyo Machine esque with the very strong Electro House stuff, but I'm loving this new color base cut. And I mean, I'm just a sucker for anything Chime, so I'm enjoying it. We got Fox Stevenson with Lemonade. Uh, I mean, it's Fox Stevenson. It's super well mixed. You've got your kind of more out of the ordinary, more uh, leveled out, I would say, out uh, lyricism uh, from Fox here. It's a bit more on the simple side in terms of his production comparatively to his last, uh, I guess, 2023 EP. But um, yeah, it's great in both its production and vocal delivery. And I think the whole cut is a solid song. Whole thing, whole thing solid. 
And we've got Marshmallow and Space Laces with Conquer. Uh, definitely an odd collab, but hey, this thing is pretty awesome. High energy, big sound, face melting baseline. I have no idea how much Marshmallow contributed to this track or the sound design at all here, but um, I, I mean, it just sounds kind of like a regular Space Laces track, and I've enjoyed that. I thought the last couple Marshmallow collabs uh, have neutered the other artist uh, that they've been that he's been collaborating with, but um, this one I thought was it felt like purely Space Laces and Marshmallow just kind of a name attached on the end, but hey, I didn't mind it. I liked it quite a bit. And uh, we're moving into the standout category, two standout tracks for me this week. And we're starting with A Cloudy Sky with Depths. The new There Must Be Something Here LP is out now. Uh, and this song is dense, uh, both in its uh, narrative lyricism and sonically. Uh, tackling the topic of some sort of relationship where things are going a bit awry, it's deeply poetic. And when paired with these kind of dueling acoustic guitars that dance in and out of um, synchronicity with one another to further convey that kind of relational tension where sometimes they're together and sometimes they're not and they bounce in and out of it. Um, it's just, yeah, there's a lot to the track that I listen to a couple times now, like actually quite a bit. And I'm like, wow, I feel like I hear something new every time. So uh, great job with Cloudy Sky. Go listen to him if you have not. And finally, my number one track of the week is Kaiza, Dancing and Crying. Uh, incredible song with this one. Uh, Kaiza is launching into a new release cycle of some EP, I think, coming out or some LP. Uh, but this might be some of her best yet. This might be one of her better songs, I think, um, yet. So the production is slick. Her vocals are the best I've heard, I think, in the last little bit. Um, it's a fun, engaging, groovy, and also commercial track that uh, I hope uh, blows up to some extent. So I think this is just this is great so um, yeah other than that uh, this has been this week in EDM I'd love to know what you guys have your thoughts on the opinions or even on my opinions your opinion on my opinion of these tracks in the comment section below but other than that I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media and I'll see you guys in another 